today we have a special study circle meet on conflict management in auditing, auditing profession and elsewhere in life. We are fortunate to have professional C. A. Ramakrishnan is with us. May I request our SAS chairman to escort the speaker onto the dais. Also welcome him to the floor of okay? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the speaker to Thank you. So, before we introduce the speaker, may I request a session? Okay, let me introduce the speaker. C. Ramakrishnan KP is a FCA, CIA USA and CISA USA and has more than 32 years of professional experience. He became an associate member of the Institute of Chartered Accounts of the, uh, Chartered in the year 1985 and was admitted a fellow in the year 1998. He has served in different national and global organizations. He has held several uh, different positions as senior internal auditor, account supervisor, accounts manager, head of finance, head of audit, etc. Currently, he is a partner of KPR, SN and Co. Chartered Accountants in India. During the last 20 years, he took up Vedic studies, his special interest. Vedic studies have been able to learn and memorize all the 700 slokas of Bhagavad Gita. Have been able to learn and memorize all the 700 slokas of Bhagavad Gita. While driving on the roads Dubai from 2000 to 2007, which gave more insight and interest in human behavior traits and attributes to help identify potential sources of interpersonal conflicts and effective solutions for their mitigation. He has given lectures on interpersonal conflicts, causes and solutions to engineering college students in Kerala, to the senior management team and the doctor of doctor movements group in Dubai. In the recent years, after returning to India from UAE in 2010, he conducted classes in Bhagavad Gita for adults and children as requested. His experience in PwC and RSM International while in Dubai gave him good opportunity to for interaction with different nationalities and cultures of the world. The big list is that I am uh, shorting his uh, point. All these varied experiences uh, gave opportunity to realize factualness of what is stated in Bhagavad Gita, thus to help himself and others to benefit from this unique knowledge contained therein for leading a happy life in spite of the harness, harshness of the material world in which we live. He happens to be the only ISKCON member who gets invited to the Islamic Cultural Centers in UAE for speaking on Bhagavad Gita. He was in Kochi from 2010 to 2016 after returning to India from UAE. Now he stays in uh, Bangalore. He has also other uh, interest in uh, playing cricket and other things. He represented Hindustan uh, Petroleum in Bombay cricket team. With this brief introduction, please welcome once again the speaker. Before I think we are picking up, may I request SAS chairman to speak for a few words? Thank you, Big Fifty. Good evening to each and every one of you. Welcoming our speaker of the day. I would also like to share with all of you, we had uh, recently last week a uh, 49th regional conference raised to that. I think most of you would have attended. I don't know how many of you attended. Okay. So, I think a uh, few of you have attended and uh, most of you would have missed the uh, occasion, uh, an opportunity to attend uh, that particular conference. Whatever the feedback I received from uh, attendees, it was a uh, very well organized and uh, very well received conference. Almost 3,360 members attended that conference and uh, everybody who came there uh, appreciated uh, whatever we did. Uh, SASC and Bangalore went together and organized this. And the, on that occasion, we have released one uh, SASC reference manual, so which contains uh, some six uh, uh, headings like the CHR Accountants Regulation Act, Accounting Auditing, Income Tax, GST and other indirect taxes, 
then we had companies that are another loss and miscellaneous. So it contains a lot of uh, technical uh, matters. So those who attended the conference, we gave them uh, as a memento, instead of giving some tax and other things, we thought uh, let us give this technical memento, so what was given. And those of you who didn't attend this conference, it's available for sale in the sales counter. It's priced at 300 rupees. If anybody would like to uh, buy this particular thing, you can uh, pay 300 and buy this. And apart from that, we also brought down uh, two souvenirs con containing all the papers that was uh, discussed in the conference. Since we couldn't get uh, souvenir on time, so few people couldn't collect. So we have uh, a little bit uh, uh, stock of uh, souvenirs. If anybody would like to have it, you can take this, this is free of cost. So if anybody wants to have a look at this uh, souvenirs, it will be there in the downstairs. While you go home, you can take this uh, two volumes of souvenirs. And if you want this uh, SIC reference manual, you can pay the internet and take it. So with these uh, few words, once again, I thank uh, uh, Bangalore branch for supporting uh, in all the way for this uh, 49th reason conference. And I also thank all the people, 3,000 and odd people who came from across southern region to come and participate in this conference and all the speakers and whoever uh, helped me to organize this particular conference. Wishing each and every one of you happy new year 2018. Thank you. First, admit that uh, I am somewhat surprised to see more than expected crowd. I thought it would be thickly added. Thank you so much. And straight away going to the PowerPoint presentation. This is basically on conflict management that we face in our day to day life. In our audit, how I started thinking about it is whilst working with uh, audit firms, size quarters, scopers, I work in Dubai. When we go with our audit findings, I was specialized in internal audit. Internal audit is a little touchy, it's directly challenging the management. So every time, one of this difficulty was resistance from management in accepting the findings. So that, as well as many other uh, interactions that we had in different nationalities, people were generally unwilling to accept a mistake or a clear black and white finding. So, answer to simultaneously, from 97 onwards, I was very much into uh, going into this con uh, satsangs in Dubai. So, answer, I got it from 7th chapter 4 slogan. What's the basic reason for that? So we we'll run through that. And I sincerely hope that whatever we discuss today will be able to help you as well. I hope. Um, I would like to make this slightly interactive, although we have a slight paucity of time. Have you ever felt insulted in life? Yes. Yes. Where does the insult hit us? Uh, please feel free to talk because this is not the subject matter. Where do where does the insult hit us? Ego heart. Ego is one answer. Heart. Heart. Anybody? Any other answers? Mind. Mind. Good. Our enthusiasm. Our enthusiasm. That's another answer. So we got mind, heart, ego, and then. Enthusiasm. Anything else, sir? It disrupts the work. Disrupts the work. But where is it hitting us? Where is it hitting us? That's the question. Hmm. We will keep the answer in suspense and then we will go. It hurts. When somebody insults, it's not a very happy experience. Before that, I just want to ask one more question. Who am I? Actually, normally I get about two hours and I pass papers and obtain, request for you to write the answer and give it back. But today we don't have the time. So, open answers are welcome. I am a particle of God. I am a particle of God. As for Shankaracharya, I would say that is a good answer, but at macro level. 
That's right. It is true. Supported by one sloka in Bhagavad Gita. Yes. Any other answers? Human. Pardon, sir? Human. Human. Yes, we are human beings. C.A. C.A. <laughs> Suppose a person has taken advocates lawyer's qualification. It's a question point. But this is one of the common answers. We link to our profession and say that some people say, I am a male, I am female, and human being is a very common answer. Particle of God. Yes, 15th chapter. Mamai Vamsho Jeeva Loke Jeeva Bhuta Sanatana Manaha Shashtani Indriyani Prakritistani Kashyati. Yes, we are all actually fragmented eternal parts of God. That is what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. Actually, we are Jeevas. Jeeva. The size of a Jeevatma is given in Shweta, Shwetara Upanishad, and Kata Upanishad. The size. We do an analysis of who we are. Size matters. Balakra Shadavagasya, Shadata Kalpitasya, Bhago Jeeva Vitneya, Sacha Anantyaya Kalpati. To explain simply, if we take the tip of a hair, ours, and split that into 10,000 pieces. Our scriptures are so perfect, it explains very nicely. First, cut the tip of the hair into 100 parts, and then take one of that part and again split that into 100 parts, that is 1 by 10,000. Easily said than done. However, it gives an indicating idea as to how minutesimally small we are. And this has been corroborated by modern science only after an electron microscope was invented. See, we are so minutesimally small in size. So that's our size. I'm not going to any elaborations, I have to run through literally to the slide. Then we go, size is Understood? What is our quality? We have three qualities. Sat, Chit, Ananda. Sat means eternal. We are eternal. That's the reason why even when we see on a daily basis in the newspapers, thousands of people die sometimes, like the tsunami which hit us sometime on 26th of December 2014, 150,000 people in Indonesia were wiped out in few hours. And on the way, it took away a lot of lives, human lives, in addition to various birds and animals. Now, when we read that, do we feel that? And daily basis we see this accident, that accident, plane crashes, old sales, some retail deaths. Do we feel that we are going to die? Honestly, I'll be very grateful if you answer that. Do we really feel that I am going to die? The other side. Exactly. <laughs> this is going to happen to somebody else, not to me. Why? That's because our first quality is self, eternal. We are eternal. We don't die. The process of getting a body in a mother's womb is actually birth, not actually coming out of her womb. The moment the body is conceived, the soul conceives, goes into a the body, that is actually the birth, and eventually when the body is discarded, that is called death. In between, we get a lot of disease and old age. So, we are not actually dying. Chit means, I will give you empirical evidence for that later. Chit means full of knowledge. But, why is it that not everyone who joins for CA can pass CA if everybody is equally knowledgeable? That's because every Jeevatma is limited or uh, rather uh, given the capability of the body in which he is trapped. To explain that I will give a simple example. This Jeevatma can take birth in a cow's body. Or it can even take birth in a, a human body. It can happen. Modern science is slowly coming into these things which has been um, derided by the Westerners when they came to India. 
they laughed at us. But now as science progresses, it is proving that whatever has been taught in India is actually true. They are moving slowly towards that. So, chit means full of knowledge. But that knowledge doesn't get manifested. To explain that this light which is coming through this pulse, what is the color? White. If I put a green transparency over one, another one red, another one blue, what would be the colors that would come out of those lights? It would be green, blue or red, whatever. That's the case the transparency has been fixed. But inside the white light remains. It has not changed. So, a person gets a gross body, physical body, according to the karma baggage that he carries and takes birth in a mother's womb according to his baggage. Original creation was something else, later on. So that's why that knowledge doesn't get manifested equally for everyone. It differs. Third one is Ananda. This is the reason why we don't want troublesome situations. Nobody wants. If you touch an ant which is going blissfully, you know, doing his busy work, but you run for its life. A worm, you touch it with something, it will again start running as quickly as it can. Same way, we also would be wanting comfortable situation. Nobody goes into a troublesome situation asking for give me some trouble. Except Kundi Devi, nobody asked, please give me more trouble. Do we go to the temples and do some Aradhi or Puja? Trouble Pushpanjali. Give me some Kashta. Why I say Malayalam Kashtapar Pushpanjali? Means botheration Pushpanjali. Give me some botheration Pushpanjali. No. Did we go to the church and light a candle saying that, give me some trouble, Lord, today I haven't had my part of troubles. No. Because basically we want to be in a state of bliss called Ananda. Hence, we don't want trouble. Nobody wants trouble. We want to avoid trouble. However, trouble is also pursue us in our life. So this is called it. Third one, the rainwater analogy as I call it. How do we get identified this Jeeva Atma? The Jeeva Atma, which is as pure as, let us say, rainwater. Rainwater falling from the sky is actually very pure. Imagine a situation here we don't have sea near to Mangalore, but suppose if it is Mangalore, there is sea coast. Some of the rain may fall into the sea. Some of it might fall into the rivers, wells, some of them into ditch, drainage. Now, until the moment the rainwater fell down into those respective places, it is pure rainwater. The moment that rainwater, pure H2O, fell into the sea, it is no more pure water, it is a sea water. We can't drink it. Whatever fell into the river is called river water, could be used for drinking with little bit of purification. What fell into wells will be called well water. Okay, we can straight away drink it. But nowadays, everywhere, equally, uh, proliferation is making it difficult, septic tanks, proliferation of uh, septic tanks. Whatever has fallen into ditch or drainage, do we touch that water? No. It's become dirty water. Until it fell down, its name was pure water. The so same way, a Jeeva Atma falls into different species of life. There are about 400,000 human life species. Starting with the cannibals of Andamans, who are called the Jarvas, to people who can float on air, half a feet at least. In 1970, it has been witnessed by somebody who came all the way from America. Now he's a Swamiji in his con, uh, Chapati temple. He basically was a Jew. But National Geographic have videographed that. So, human beings, like what we studied in mathematics, integration, zero to infinity, it differs. Those who are cannibals, even though the Jarvas are still present, and the Navy has got a place 
And that office is called INS Jarwan. So that kind of variation. And there are 80 lakhs of other species, which in 2012 has been corroborated by a team of scientists from about 100 countries. They spent about 150 odd million dollars, researched for 10 years or something, and came out with the finding about 80 lakhs. But this is already given in Padmapura. Again, another indication that whatever has been in our scriptures, Srutish Pudi Piranadis are factual. So, Jivatma falls into different species. It can be a worm, it can be bacteria. What's the smallest one? Smallest that living being on earth. Smallest. Amoeba. Zygote. Zygote. Any others? Smallest living being. Smallest that has been identified so far. I thought it was virus until a couple of years back. One medical student, they were, um, I was speaking to them, they said, why roid is still smaller than virus? And the biggest one is blue whale. Not that blue whale game that's come up, but actual blue whale. So, they all get a body according to their whatever uh, entitlement. We human beings go into 400,000 species. There are 400,000 of human species. Now, you have seen this probably, this gentleman you might have seen, many of you. Why did he get a body like that? No hands, no legs. But still, he has fought it all and then come up in life. The great spirits. What's the reason? Why some people take birth like this? And some people very hale, happy, very healthy, some strong like Arnold Schwarzenegger, who I, whose name I quote often. Some very beautiful like our old Aishwarya Rai, still she is very beautiful. But then, what makes the difference? Some people live. Some of you might have gone to Shabarimala probably. There you see Kapantam, long back when I went in 1980s, shocked to see. Just they have a head-like structure and a body associated with that, connected with that. No hands, no legs. Obviously the beggars mafia might have brought them over there. But that is a shock to me. But I never knew any of these things. My study of all these things started only from say 1985 onwards probably. Any, any reason what makes a person to get this kind of uh, body? Karma. Karma. Beautiful. Excellent. It is karma. Karma baggage. Karma, akarma and vikarma. Akarma is the actions we perform which does not have reaction. We are all sitting down breathing. That's an absolute thing we are doing. It doesn't have a reaction. I'm giving a very simple example. Brushing teeth, you know. There are many things which, I mean, there can be many numbers, but then they don't have any reaction. But we need to know what is Vikarma. What is Vikarma? Anybody? Please do not hesitate, even if it's wrong. I just want you know, Make it little interactive. What is Bikarma? Actually, it is Virudha Karma, which should not be done. I'll give a small example for a Virudha Karma. It's easy to understand. Suppose a person is so poor that he doesn't even have money to buy food. He was rich, but now he is reduced to penury. He doesn't even have money to buy food. Such a situation. He has three options and he is feeling terribly hungry, he has eaten for two days. He has three options, beg, borrow or steal. Begging is fine because a person who might have more food, in our culture, under the name is considered to be very, very great and it's really great. Aditi Devo Bhava, 
Our culture is like that. Anybody coming to home who is devoid of uh, food, we give it. So that's accepting charity. Somebody else has got extra of it, so we accept it. So this person can actually <laughs> pay it. There's no problem because he's just accepting charity of another magnanimous person. Second one is borrow. If he has borrowed, he has an obligation to return that. Because borrow means we have an obligation to return. I just took food. People might not even bother to take the food back. Unless it is a, some specially difficult terrain where food is in absolute scarcity. Third one, someone has kept his food to eat, but then this gentleman steals it. That has a reaction. That goes to reaction. And that is called Vedutta Karma. And this can be expanded to any levels, like stealing property, stealing other persons, dear things, etc., etc., murder, so many, so many things. So I just gave a very small example due to time constraint. Viruddha Karma has a reaction. And accumulated Viruddha Karmas give a person actually different bodies in their next life. It is mentioned in one of the scriptures in detail. To explain karma further, I will go into this particular fruit collection story with which I believe it will be easy to understand what exactly is meant by karma. Because karma is complex. Bhagavan himself, Krishna himself uh, says in the 24th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, karma na ikhvi bodhavyam, bodhavyam cha vikarmana. Akarmanascha bhodavyam gahana karmano vidi. He says, one has to understand what is karma, what is vikarma, and what is akarma. However, the intricacies of this karma and vikarma, etc., are complex. He says, gahana karmano vidi. It's not so easy to understand. And Arjuna does not ask anything further. Because Arjuna realized that, okay, when Krishna says something, he accepts the truth. Now this small story, a king wanted to take in one more minister. So he told his chief minister, get me a new minister. So the chief minister called for applications and eventually he shortlisted three candidates, young guys with potential for becoming the next minister to serve the king in the team of ministers. The final test will be given by the king himself directly. So, king asked these three gentlemen, youngsters, to come to him and told them, please take these three bags. There were similar sized bags, three of them. Please pick it up Go to my fruit yard where there are a lot of fruit trees. Gather the fruits, good ones, which could be eaten, edible fruits. Don't collect, pick up any of those non edible ones. Collect good fruits, fill up the bag, and then come back by the end of the day. You got a full day till evening. He also said one more thing. Nobody is going to inspect your bags after you come back. <coughs> the first thing, and the other thing was, um, you can actually avail the help from the servants who are there. They will help you with ladders, etc., to pluck the fruits. Three of them went in to the fruit yard, or okay. took the help from. Uh, Servants. First person, as usually in all stories go, very sincerely climbed the trees with the help of the servants. The plucking part, they have to do it, servants will not help. Picked up only nice edible fruits and filled up his bag. Took a lot of trouble. It was evening by the time he was through collecting good fruits. Second gentleman said, anyway, nobody is going to inspect the bag. Let me just pick up whatever is fallen, good ones, rotten ones, or not so good ones. He just filled up them all and 
slept in the orchard the remaining time, came back in the evening at the scheduled appointed time. Third guy was absolutely naughty. He said, why should I bother? Tom is going to inspect the bag. Filled up the bag with whatever he could. You know, fruits, something, leaves, whatever. Then the king enters them in the evening and asked him, have you filled the bags with uh, edible fruits? He said, yes. Alright, fine. As I told in the morning, nobody is going to inspect the bags. However, you will have to now retire into those rooms that you see behind you, one one door each, and stay there for the next three days, and you will subsist on the fruits that you have collected. Please have a fruit festival, three days. Obviously, the gentleman who collected good fruits could subsist on the good fruits that he has collected, the edible, and he came out third day, emerged victorious. Second gentleman fell sick somehow after the quota of good fruits were finished, he ate some rot rotten fruits and fell sick. So, he withdrew third day, had to be admitted to the hospital or to the wild there. Third guy, after one day somehow he withstood, you know, not to admit defeat, but then he couldn't. Second and third day he could just, he said, said I'm sorry, and then withdrew from that. So, this is one example. We actually are responsible for our own karma package. After what happens is, when something goes wrong, normally what is seen is, we get to blame others. Srila Prabhupada, his constant Acharya, often used to say, we actually have ordered whatever that's God delivered to us. Don't blame others. Keep your karma package clean, that's what he used to say. Hope oh, this karma thing has been explained to somewhat understandable way given the time constraint. Now the second, next part is reincarnation. Many lives, many masters. Dr. Brian Bayes, he was a psychologist in the United States, basically a Jewish. He was uh, treating one girl who was from a Catholic background. It's a book, Many Lives, Many Masters. So, in the United States of America, they have to document whatever treatments they are doing, etc. This girl at certain point started talking in a gibberish language. And then he stopped his hypnotist at that point of time because he was doing a backward regression to find out the causes for her trauma. With the patient's permission, he continued and went back with the recording, 12 lies behind. This is recorded in the book. And because it's United States, I'm 100% sure, if it is falsified documentation, they will be taken to task. Whoever it is. Integrity in these professions are very important. They will be jailed also if they misrepresent facts. So they have to also show evidence. Second, Recent one is 2014 in Southampton when doctors are operating on a patient. The patient life supporting system failed. So three weeks. And then they uh, somehow revived the person almost from a near the situation. The patient came back to consciousness. He said, I was, I was actually able to see all of you from the top corner of the room and just watching what you are doing on me. On me. No, so this soul was watching from the top, that's what. But it's, since this it is coming report from UK and USA, we can accept it. <laughs> it's UK and USA certification all over the world these days. So there are evidences, but then again it's up to each individual to believe in reincarnation or not. But this is substantial to be many evidences. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. The soul goes on. This is one question that I asked some cardiologists. But where does the heart get the energy to pump incessantly? They were not able to actually answer. Because medical science as of now does not have answers for it. One, of, one, one, one gentleman said, 
It is just, you know, you put some blood and uh, heart together, it starts coughing. Oh, fine. But he was not able to give the answer. It is basically because the soul is present in this heart region. Ishwara Sarva Bhuta Nam Kriddeshe Arjuna Tishtadi Brahmaya Sarva Bhutani Yadra Yudhani Maya. And he also says, Sarvasya Chakum Kriddhisadi Vishto Matta Hasmari Nana Mapohanamcha. So here, this is the region that actually the soul resides. Whenever we say, even the cruelest person also, when some conscious spirit matter comes, you will say, no, I don't, I didn't do it. No, they put their hands involuntarily. Whichever part of the world it is. Nobody puts the hand here and says, hey, I don't, I didn't do it. But by thinking people uh, unknowingly put their hand here. Thinking. When as man say, I didn't do it. Hand comes here. It doesn't go to the stomach region or it goes to the leg region or the head region. It goes here because this is where actually the soul is residing, the heart region. Heart pumps because it's the soul. However, I must also confess that I still haven't got an answer for uh, heart transplant, what happens. I have been asking this question to many. If you please get an answer, I'd be grateful. Even now, I mean, I'm asking that question. When a heart transplant happens, which soul is going to reside in that particular body? So, eventually we get a body, we are not the body that we see. That is the sum of one of this. Now, we shall again go into what is this conflict's root cause. This is 7th chapter 4 sloka where our body structure or for any living being structure is mentioned. Bhuvi rapo analo vayu kham mano buddhi revacha ahankara iti yevne dhinna prakhidi rashtata That's the sloka. Every living being's body comprises these eight elements at a macro level. Not at a micro level, macro level. First one, panchabhudam. It's a cross body comprising five elements. Most of us Indians we know that. Now a lot of westerners also know that. Our foreigners also know this because they are learning. Earth, water, fire, air, akasha, mind, then up to five, they are gross body, which is part of this body which can be seen, touched, tasted, smelled, <coughs> but above that, there are three elements which cannot be actually is called subtle body which is mind intelligence which is called buddhi and topmost is ahankara constitutionally ahankara dominates us <laughs> that feeling that you know I feel and that is the reason why conflicts arise and sir you mentioned ego when insults come when somebody insults us it is actually hitting. Ahankara starts working. Hey, he called me dog. Or oh, something. When I came, he didn't get up. When I went for his wedding, he didn't receive me properly. That I feel. Because Ahankara dominates every living being constitutionally. Now, this is just for information. Brain is 2% of the body. It consumes about 20% of the body's energy. Now there is another nice analogy to explain these combinations, you know. Uh, I will show the picture first and come back to this. This is from Kadodhita. Atmanam vidhinam vidhi, sariram vidham evacha, buddhim tu saradim vidhi, that's sloka goes. Our body is compared to that of a chariot. I will go to that particular slide. Our body is actually compared to the chariot. Five horses that pulling the chariot are the five senses. The sharpest is hearing, srotram, chakshuku, sparsanamcha, desanam, granam, evacha. So those are the five ones. And these sense organs are actually controlled by something called the reels forces have to be controlled. That is mind. Mind is like a harness to control the five forces. 
and then charioter who is driving it is actually buddhi and the passenger is somebody who is going for the CA examination, he is quite perplexed, you know, he's quite, I'm, I'm talking about my childhood days. Nowadays I think the kids are studying pretty well, they are not so scared. So, something like that, baffled, where am I going? You know, that, that's Atma. So this is the broad level classification. Now, Ahankara makes us to feel that I am greater than the other person. Normally, and this also causes conflicts. Generally, a person is eager to prove that I am greater than the other person in front of me. Generally. Is it not so? When we meet, say, professional disagreement, we say it's professional disagreement, eager to prove that I am greater than the other person as far as my knowledge level goes. Normally. Exceptions are there. Some people may be actually have seen all those things, they are not so popular. But am I right in this observation? Generally that happens. Particularly people who are not very uh, intelligent or vivekam. There is a difference between intelligence, qualification and wisdom. So wise people will not do that. Or in maturity as we call it. You know. But then the tendency. Why do we try to prove that I am greater than the other person? Because constitutionally ahankara dominates us. Though in the chariot, uh, buddhi is shown as a driver, actually it is not buddhi that drives most of the time the chariot. It is ahankara. He is the extra driver. And in this Kali Yuga, the qualities of Kali Yuga will come to that in the next slides. Chariot actually is ahankara, most of the time. And that ahankara actually forces a person to go into all sort of wrong directions. That's the reason. Intelligence is supposed to direct the mind. However, often it is ahankaram that directs the mind and it leads a person to a lot of difficult situations. Simple example, I have seen actually two kids, toddlers, fighting over a tissue paper when you have to buy. The first fellow picked up the toddlers, chin to pintos, you know. There's a tissue box and somehow there's a tissue paper that's fallen down. The first guy said, hmm, I got a tissue paper. Then immediately the other guy sitting there went and pulled that tissue paper. No, mine. You know. Then they started pulling at the tissue paper, got it torn. Then both started crying. In their own mother crying that, you know, my tissue paper was gone. Whereas the whole box of tissue paper was lying on the table. Now the kids, those chintos, were actually so uh, worked up by one tissue paper, my tissue paper, no, my tissue paper. Most of the time, people are actually fighting over many, many things, like those two small kids fighting over tissue paper. Honestly, all these major fights that you see, glorious fights, if you really do an analysis, that is somewhat similar to these two small kids fighting over tissue paper. Why is that so? Again, because each person thinks I am the owner. There is again another sloka that says, Prakriti kriya padani, gunai karmani sarvasaha, ahankara vimoda atma, kattaha vidi manyade. I feel it, you know. I. You remember old boxing champion, heavyweight champion? His original name was Cassius Clay. Then, to avoid the Vietnam War, he became Muhammad Ali. He used to take pride in bashing other people. And then, he was great, really great. But then, occasionally he used to take sadistic pressure in beating the brain out of the other person like that. And how did he die? Parkinson's disease. Yes, there was one, I think, believe it is Los Angeles Olympics, where he was supposed to light the... He could not hold that small torch to light the fire. Somebody had to come and help him. Because he had done so much of, you know, bashing of other person's brain, there's a reaction to that. And eventually, poor chap, he also got Parkinson's disease. That's why in India, 
a lot of such things are actually not permitted tradition in India okay we are not living in tradition in India it's something else so uh, Ahankaram does a lot of damage I'll also tell one small incident which I actually saw little Suhani incident I had to actually visit one family, again most of the things which have happened in Dubai, here again. But this one, I can't forget, it's happened about 10 years ago. A mother and father, they were not Indians. And they were a small, three-year-old daughter, her name was Suhani. So, I had gone there to just for a casual visit, I had to view something and then immediately I had to go. The moment I went and they said, somebody is waiting for us down. Parking was a bit difficult. So somebody is waiting for us. We'll just go meet that person and come out. Please wait for us. No, five minutes. I waited, sat in the sofa and was watching Suhani. And Suhani is very, very, very pleasant child. As soon as the parents left, she ran to the fridge. She is very fond of cold water, which the parents won't give. And the the bottles are kept with normal water and the one bottle of Pepsi it's almost if I remember 4 liter or 5 liters that big one which we don't get in here I think some of those bottles were initially marketed then later withdrawn so 5 liters of water it is 5 kilograms so she is fond of cold water I know that I said Betty may leke duka in my broken Hindi said no, I'm I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> and she lifted the bottle and it is 5 kilograms and she is only 3 years old, you know, skinny. The bottle fell from her hands and water splashed all over the place. First thing I did was, she, she panicked, she didn't expect that. It's a small child, intelligent child. But I took up some newspapers and uh, put them all over, spread them all over so that the water doesn't you know, spread to other places. The parents came back. As soon as the bell rang and the mother came in through there, she ran to the mother, hugged her, and crying profusely, Mama, I have not done anything, Mama, I have not done anything, Mama, I have not done anything. I was watching all these things. You know? They were a little perplexed as to what happened. Then I just watched for some time and told, no, it's not, not that, don't beat her. They had that habit of beating her also. That's the reason. So, this child was actually scared that she might get another beating. I told them, don't beat her. She's very intelligent. She's made a mistake. That's true. But this is what happened. What to find out. But the denial by the child, even before the parents knew what had happened, I'm not able to take it away from my mind. So, three-year-old child, want to speak of big book, Lalu Prasad Yadavs and uh, 2G and uh, 3G scams etc. How people are refuting their you know, guilt. You can accept. Because that's because Ahankaran dominates. People generally will want to immediately cover up their It's a natural propensity because it's Kali Yuga. This Yuga is like that. Four aspects that could actually cause Ahankara to manifest. Money. Money power will make a person corrupt with hunger. There's a saying, we say poor people who oh, poor person, no, pao. In Malayalam we say pao. You know, understood? Pao. Sadhu. Oh. Give that poor, poor pao some money or positional power and then watch how he behaves. If he behaves in a old manner in which you know gentle manners etc in a sadhu type then it is really great you give money to a person lots of money not i'm not talking about small money or money. even poor families after somebody wins a lottery i've seen how their attitude changes and some people who get position power a person struggling gets a police officer's position and they change or some government officer's position they change some of them change for good, but they are very, very minute or similarly small. Most of them change for bad. That's because Ahamda. Only they come back to normalcy after they retire. You would have missed. I am not into much of any tax practice or anything, but most of you must be experienced that. 
in these tax offices. I'm sure. Am I right? Any type of power. The youth by itself, this is actually taken from uh, Pachatantra. Youth by itself, they say, no. Who the hell are you to ask me? They are the parents. I have my right. Oh my God. We have brought you up. Get lost, parents. Sometimes they answer like that also. Everything comes because that youth by itself, you know, vibrant, bodily very powerful at that time. <clears throat> Like that. Then beauty, particularly for ladies. If they are very beautiful, oh, the whole world is watching. <laughs> that also can cause a This None of these things apply to wise people. But wisdom is little level. Usual team members, intelligence and humility leads to success. Buddhi, goes hand in hand with uh, humility and that leads to success. Ahankara and ignorance, danger. Like the Suhani example you can remember. That can be magnified to any extent. But intelligent people, wise, wisdom and academic qualifications are different. A person might be qualified but he might not be wise. So wisdom and that is buddhi the Dhami Bhutti Yogam It leads to success and happiness. Success leads to happiness. Whereas the other one, Ahankara and ignorance, leads to danger and frustration. And they'll start saying, Oh, I didn't do it. Somebody is, they start to put the blame on them. I'll just give you three case studies to understand. HGL strike. Hindustan Unilever had a strike long back when I was doing my uh, employment in Hindustan Petroleum. There was a general manager, HRD who gave us junior management development programs way back in 88. I believe that he did not create a story. Hindustan Unilever had a lockout, or strike, three months, that's what he said, or definitely more than a month. And imagine a company like Unilever, Hindustan Unilever closing down for, even for a day. Then, eventually somebody did an analysis of what we call a root cause analysis. They drilled it down to find out what exactly caused this. When they went down and down and down, they found out the real reason was the size of Italy served in non-management canteen was smaller than the Italy served in management canteen. So, some union leader observed that that Italy served in management canteen is bigger and what is served in workers canteen is not so big. So he went obviously made an issue. Maybe the person in charge of these things that said, hey, I have seen that things when I work in Bombay. So Some people are generally accepted, public area, other places are very tolerant. He would have said immediately, hey, Get lost. I don't care that kind of attitude. And that becomes an ego issue. And then what happens is a small conflict which could have been resolved at a very, very, very starting point, low level, once it becomes a prestige issue and goes beyond control, it can go to heavy damages. And that's what happened in Hindu Sunday. But somebody had the wisdom to do appoint a special committee to find out and find out what exactly cost. And this was a real reason, the size of the Italy. This is as told by that general manager who was also HRP consultant. I don't have any reasons to disbelieve what he said. Second one, the Punjab crisis, which almost split the country again. 1947 we had a partition, 1990 we almost had another partition because of the Punjab problem. Anybody can say, request your answers or your uh, senior persons, please. What actually cost? What is the root cause for the Punjab issue? Root cause. Please.
anyone. They want to have independent Khalsa land. They wanted to have independent Khalsa, Khalsa land, independent Khalistan. Independent Khalistan. But this was before that. That came later. Indira Gandhi versus Bindal Bale. Indira Gandhi versus Bindal Bale. Actually, what I, from my whatever knowledge I have limited, uh, Bindal Bale was a product of Sanjay Gandhi and uh, Zail Singh, that's what I heard, but that came second. They wanted to teach a lesson to Badr, Akali. Real reason is still yet something else. It was river water sharing between Haryana and Punjab. Thanks for river. Jilam river. Jilam. What is the river? Yes, I, I, I don't remember the name, sir. But Jilam it was basically on river water sharing. Water sharing treaty. They felt the Hindus of Haryana was being favored more than the Sikhs of Punjab. Akali Dal was very strong in their agitation. To beat Akali Dal, they created this Basmasuran. Uh, etc. And you know what? Almost so many good people died, even the Prime Minister also died. That is where Karma Neva Adhikaraste, Ma Hareshu Katajana, Ma Karma Bada Hedurpu, Ma De Sangos to Akarmani. There's a reaction for the Karmas. Third one, which happened in Kerala after I came back, 2010, watch, uh, reading the newspapers, where people are normally in a tiring hurry. So, a car driver with his four passengers was in a tearing hurry to defeat the train which was about to cross the level crossing before the train crossed he wanted to cross. I have seen so many times like that. The eager, you know, anybody from Kerala here? Yeah. Am I right sir? Yeah. Thank you. What happened? The whole train got smashed. It was just dragged along the track by the train and all the five passengers died. That's what that, I had taken a uh, photograph of that long back and kept. But classic example, that, that idiot driver, Sahakta, he can just step on the brake, slow down, he was eager to beat the train. All of them died. It's all, you know. And then, at this point I would like to ask, I have spoken so many things from Bhagavad Gita scriptures, etc. One, at least at many places I have not discussed yet. How could I accept Bhagavad Gita to be factual? Many people ask me this time, sincerely. Not with a challenging mentality, but to understand. So, luckily, having memorized the slokas, one advantage is, like quoting the sections in a law case, I could quote slokas. By virtue of being in Dubai, we were privy to a host of nationalities. Bombay was the melting pot of India as far as my experience when I worked in Hindu San Petroleum Bombay mattered. And Dubai was the melting pot of so many nationalities. There is one sloka in 10th chapter, 33rd sloka. Akshara Nam Akaros me, Dwalpas Samasika Seja, Ahameva Akshaya Akaro, Data Aham Vishudu. Krishna says, amongst aksharam, letters, direct translation in English, A represents me, Akari. So we did a small research, I did T of Satsangi Santrami. Whichever nationality you need, please ask them what is the starting letter alphabet in your language. Two, our pleasant surprise being found in every language, even the search is on, every language that had a script, the Pradhana, first one was A, including Arabic, which I learned because I wanted to learn Arabic when I went in 1986. It is Alif, that is also Akhar. Now, my logical auditor's question is, how did this person Standing on the battlefield of Kurukshetra approximately 5,152 years ago, know that all the languages in the world have Akhara as the first alphabet. Let us just take
take it as he's not God or whatever it is, you know. I said in Bhagavad Gita, it's always his address as Bhagavad. I also consider him as Bhagavad. How did he know the languages that is spread all over the globe, Bhuganda, you know, continents separated by sea, there was no internet, there was no mobile phone connectivity, nothing, no advanced telecommunication system as we have today. No WhatsApp. How did he know wearing just a dhoti on the battlefield, driving a chariot for his favorite disciple and friend, Arjuna? How did he know that? Every language in the world, if there is an akshara, akshara means valuable, akshara means infallible. How did he know that? Unless he is actually the creator of all the languages in the world. He had authentic knowledge. Even now it is not me. I am still searching. Sir, so request if any of you find any languages, please find out what is the pratham, means starting letter in your language. It will be R. If there is something else, I am actually wanting to learn. Second one is about uh, animals on the face of the earth. That's the slogan. About animal kingdom. There is lion and lion is stated as Mrgendroham. King lion, kingly qualities. Lion does not kill for fun. It actually has got a majestic lifestyle. It does not eat dead animals. That's what we understood. Now, even today, there is no equivalent animal on the face of the earth that can be equated to this kingly lion. How did this person know? Unless he is creator of all the animals on the animal kingdom. Okay, we can say this is now on the face of the earth. How about other aspects? For instance, let us go dive deep into the sea. Here he says, Pavana Pavata Masmi, 10th chapter 31st sloka. Pavana Pavata Masmi, Rama Shastra Vrita Maha, Jashana Makaras Chasmi, Srodasa Asmi Chanani. About aquatics, he says, Among the aquatics, the shark represents me. Even today, with all the modern equipment at their disposal, no scientist or scientist team have been able to discover a fiercer aquatic than shark. Once I was talking about this to a bunch of kids, UP, UP level kids, upper primary, below upper primary. The one kid immediately stood up at summer camp, it was April, May. said, Prabhu sir, how about whale? Then his friends base. A mammal, not an aquatic. Oh, I, I felt vindicated, you know. With the kids, they are listening so intensely. I felt happy about it. Yes, shark is actually an aquatic. Whale is not an aquatic. It is a mammal. It has to come up to breathe. The kid knew that. And what made me feel happy? It was not just, you know, going above their head. They were listening. Or they were kids. <coughs> kids grasped very quickly. Teaching slokas to the kids is much easier than teaching the elders. That is about the aquatics. How did this person know about it? The next one is still stunning. This one is 9th chapter 6 sloka. Krishna gives an analogy. Yatāka sthito nityam vāyu sarvatra go maha tathā sarvāni bhūtāni mastāni dhivadāri how the mighty wind is contained within the sky, Arjuna, so are all the living beings contained within me. Now we have given the example of how our body is structured. Earth, water, fire, air, Akash, cross body. Our body has that, five elements. Mind, intelligence and ahankara are subtle bodies, which cannot be seen, touched or anything. From the behavior of a person only we can make up. <laughs> Now Akasha is at the top. Now Krishna says, all the living beings are contained within me, like how wind, the mighty wind which can go anywhere, unfettered, is contained within the 
Akash. There's nothing else in this sloka, but we are auditors. We think outside the box. And he started thinking. That means there is no air outside Akash. Who discovered this? A Russian cosmonaut, Yuri Gagarin, about 100 years ago, or within the last 100 years, when the Russian cosmonauts went to outer space, they discovered there is no air. How did this person know about it? Unless he is the creator, he knows the structure of the universe. See a situation. 1,602 scientists were eliminated in Europe for saying that the earth is round and it's going around the sun. One person's name most of us know. That is Galileo Galilei. Second person is relatively unknown because his death was quite costly. He was burned to death on a cross. His name is Giordano Bruno. You can check it out. I am not creating that. In fact, I came upon that in one of those other articles. Giordano Bruno was burned to death, was tied to a cross and burned to death because he said this fact, 1600. Imagine the knowledge level of the Europeans whom we adore. I am speaking in an alien language because this is Kaliga. It is That is how it should be. You know, whereas here, in our scriptures, the structure of the universe is so beautifully mentioned. But at gunpoint, we were forced to change all those things. I am not talking about inciting some anti-feeling. The best training that I got was under the European bosses in PricewaterhouseCoopers. They changed my life. I joined there at the age of 39, which normally they don't take. Junior position, I sacrificed just to join a big firm. And that was not a bad decision. The way they treat you, it is totally opposite to what colonial British masters have treated in the colonies. They are so professional, so respectful to your opinion, your time. A subordinate is respected. After I left PwC, I was in another company as group financial accountant. My British boss who recruited me, who would also sack me. When he comes to my room, he will knock and say, Ram, can I trouble you for a moment? That is the kind of manners that excellent Western professionals have. What we had here was the colonials. We'll come to that when we see discuss on the British colonial. Now, Bhagavad Gita is factual. Time limitation, I have to just rush through, leave last 15 minutes for question answers, if at all anybody is present at that time. <laughs> then <laughs> As the body grows, our desires change. Shankaracharya, there is one famous slogan. Balastaval Krida Sakta, Tarunastaval Taruni Sakta, Vrindastaval Chinta Sakta, Parame Brahmani Kopina Sakta. Children love to play. And when a small child grows up in adolescent stage, Taruna Stavla Taruni Sakta. Taruna is looking at Taruni and Taruna wants to see Taruna. It's quite normal. If, if it is not the case, if Taruna is looking at another Taruna, then there's a cross. <laughs> Which is happening in most of the countries now. So, the body is decided at Vritta Stavla Chinta Sakta. Old age, they will be thinking all the time. Because gross body cannot work the way they wanted to. I cannot even walk fast, forget about good, no, bowel good leg, leg breaks. I played for the Sun Pretonian team in Bombay, but they don't take other than Marathi's nobody. Madrasi will never be taken. But my, I was a right, very good right arm leg spinner, so they did, took me. Now, today, ask me to go on right arm leg spin, my hands will not move the way I want to. So, as the body grows old, we can't do anything. Finally, Parame Brahmani Kopita Sakta. One person who has got Brahmatna, he can never get angry. Who is Brahmatna? Who sees God's Amsha in everybody? That is, anybody. He has got a perfect knowledge that, as Sir mentioned, we are all fragmental parts of God. You know, 
amsha. But amsha is not food, that's the difference. It's only amsha. Like for instance, this hair, as soon as, so long as it remains on my head, it is okay. But the moment it falls down, it is dirty. So amsha, when it remains with the hole, then it is beautiful. Otherwise it is not. So there's a difference. This is uh, something a little long, but I'll just read out. The misconception caused by ahankara, anybody, anything that is related to my body or my bodily achievements is the best. I would get annoyed when any derogatory comments are made or actions are perpetrated on anything related to my body. Some people get very annoyed. For instance, my parents, my siblings, my school, my husband, up to that, my husband, once the husband comes or wife comes, then situations are changing. Then my parents, my siblings start changing. Then it becomes my husband, my wife, my kids. That's Maya, you know, Maya Shakti. My children, my shoes, my dog, my language. We are seeing fights for languages, river waters, uh, my political party, Kerala, CPM kills people. And then there is retaliation, killing spree. Yesterday also something happened, which pains. Nowhere else it happens like that, only there. My country, my qualification. Hey, Indian is better than British CA. <laughs> you heard comments like that? That happens in Middle East, not in India, because there are only India CAs. But there it happens. Hey, our CA is better than Sri Lanka CA. So these are all common factors, you know. Chennai incident in 1984, due to time constraint, I don't want to say that. There is actually, when I was doing my article training, three months crash course. So we are staying in uh, Kinagar, 40 Bazaar. Good water is available. So those days, we had this uh, payment booth, telephone booth, where we could go and make telephone calls. So there was one, these booths used to be allotted to people who were crippled. Physically handicapped. There was one person near to our lodge who couldn't actually walk. His legs were, you know, down. But very strong. Hands were very strong because most of his activities were his hands. So one day when we went to make a telephone call, he was trying to put a cardboard on which extra cardboard, you know, he sits on a cardboard and set the mood, you know, how tough life you know. So he was trying to put it on top of some shelf or something and it is not possible for him to reach. Natural inclination, we wanted to help. He said, I wanted to take it and put it there. He actually abused me and my friend for doing that. I was totally lost. We were totally perplexed. We just tried to help him. But I could understand why he behaved like that. But that never incident never went away from my mind. Although it happened in 1984. That's because he felt insulted that he couldn't perform a function of keeping that there. He felt insulted. That's the reason. Then there are so many other things. I don't want to expand on that. Pretending to have something great without actually having it. Normally, you will hear comments like this. Money is not a problem for me. Actually, that person's biggest problem might be money. He must be poor. <laughs> Have you encountered a situation like that? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. they want to cover it up. It's called actually a deceitful behavior. They want to camouflage it. Telling lies. I don't have to expand on that. We keep on hearing that every day on the channel televisions, discussions. Defending mistakes, even whilst knowing that it is not right to do so. It's all about Kaliuga effects actually. Olden days, people were honest. Trying to dominate, trample others. The moment I have some power, come on. Trample upon the other person like a doormat. Unjustified anger resulting in arguments and fights. Pampering the body by indulging in bodily pressure, that could land in all sorts of troubles, terrible stories that we read in newspapers. I don't have to explain. No inclination to listen to qualified persons or their sensible advices to one's own detriment. Kids, some of them. Overtaking on the roads, you had the experience when you were low. Here I have not seen it on a 
honestly. Bangalore I haven't seen much problem. But other highways and Dubai also. You want you put the indicator wrong, other vehicle will come and block it. You have the experience? They won't allow you to overtake. Why? Because the small stretch of low road, piece of road in front of my car is my property. Who the hell are you to, you know, approach on that? That's the question. Committing suicide. About a few months ago, there was one news piece which I read. One girl committed suicide because her mother did not give 1,000 rupees for having a party on Saturday. School girl. It's very sad. Have you read that? Anybody remembers that? I just picked it up and put it here. And many people commit suicide for even smaller things. Then we have a body, how is the body disposed of? That's the question. Assimilates with the earth. Ashes, people get burnt. Then convert to stool. I will give the higher example. Emperor Kanishka was bombed by Sikh terrorists long ago. Anybody remembers that? The plane fell just before, into the sea, just before reaching Scotland, into the sea. It was highly shark infested seas. They could not even retrieve the bodies of the people who died. They were all eaten away by the sharks. And the other one, ashes bus accident which happened in Calicut, my hometown. The bus met with an accident, this was again 25 years ago. Before anyone could do anything, actually the axle hit the road and it got dragged and sparks came, it went to the cylinder, uh, sorry, that uh, diesel tank, it exploded. I think 33. The reason was the axle was tied with the rope. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. What's your good name, sir? Thank you. 50 years back, what was it? It was uh, it's not used to be by the road. Axel was tied to the rock, right? The rock broken, that's why Axel fell. So the point is, in that, there were Hindus, Muslims, and Christians, everybody. The bodies could not even be identified. If you are referring to the same accident, that time some 33 people died inside the house. That's about 25 odd years ago. Somewhere we are calling. But, huh? Pagan. Pagan, sir. So, it was all turned into ashes. In this case, it was converted to stool, and this is said in Bhagavad The body is either going into the earth or ashes or converted to stool. That's only the value. Then why we are actually burning? It is giving those elements back and no pollution. Burning time that's a pollution, but otherwise not. Middle East, I also made my own research that soil has got high degree of sulfur content. And there is no firewood even those days, you would go rewind 1400 years or 2000 years ago. Not even sufficient firewood for cooking. How could actually one burn the bodies, you know, with using all precious items? Water and firewood etc. were precious in the desert. The sulfur content in the earth was very high. You just bury anything in decayed flesh, in no time it will become tinder dry. You see it? Just bury it because the sulfur content in the sand is so high. So that is the ideal situation there. Six strong enemies, Kama, Krodha, Loha, Moha, Mata, Mansari. I don't want to expand on that. Word of caution, all soft spoken or smiling persons need not necessarily be humble. Have you had this experience? Some people will give smiling. Serene smile, but they will see things inside. Corollary, a person who is candid in his her expression of opinion or for the rightness, <coughs> forthrightness in performing the prescribed duties could be actually misconstrued as an ahankari. It has happened to me many times. I used to be very forthright. But now, actually, what is required is you are not supposed to call a spade a spade. In our culture at least. Arabs also the same thing. Never give them a true opinion. Asking for trouble. Whereas the whites, the beauty, why everybody goes to UK, USA? One of the key reasons is they welcome criticism. If you point out there's something wrong here, they'll appreciate that. Here, hmm, they take a salad there. 
That's not right. That all, the management change that is required in our management culture is appreciate a person who points out mistakes with a good intention, not with a derogatory intention. When some subordinate brings up something, sir, there's something apparently wrong here. Listen to that. Don't brush it aside. Never brush it aside. If you've seen that movie, Pearl Harbor, Torah, 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 recently, I think I recently said. There is a subordinate giving a warning message to the commander somewhere inside. Sir, please, there's something. He's brushing it aside. No, no, you can't. You just need to brushing it aside, brushing it aside. Eventually, there were Japanese bombers coming into Pearl Harbor. And they bombed the place to pieces. And the commander is watched, you know, properly lost. So, normally in the whites, they don't do that. Normally, my experience. But in our culture, if it is supported who is coming with a person in the lower level coming with a suggestion, we try to brush it aside. No, don't do that. Listen to them. Even a child might be talking something sensible. Listen to them. Never, you know, brush it aside. What are the solutions? Now we come to solutions, how to avoid conflicts. Most important, drain out ahankara and fill the space with buddhi. Buddhi into ahankara is a constant game. Either buddhi works or ahankara works. Both will not work together. A self, classic self-destruction example is Saddam Hussein. A first leader who changed Iraq from an ordinary country to a mighty power in the Middle East. And he was growing bigger than what he was expected to in the eyes of the Americans. So they fooled him three times. My observation. First, he was forced to attack Iran. They both destroyed each other. Master strategy, I would call. So that Iran will not develop, Iraq will not develop. But unfortunately, Saddam Hussein played into the hands of that. American strategy. Ten years. No forces in the world could stop them from fighting each other. Then, he was again fooled by forcing, falling, he fell into the trap of attacking Kuwait in 19, uh, I think it was 91. 91? 90, 1990. 90, August. And last, again something like And eventually when his use was over, they hunted him down. One mistake he did was, he took this thing's personal and he said a scud towards Bush senior when Bush was visiting Kuwait. <laughs> so the junior Bush when he came, he took it as a personal vendetta. That 2003 attack on Iraq on allegations of weapons of mass destruction was a false perpetrated on the whole world by Bush and Blair. I can say this with confidence. Blair recently admitted it was a mistake. And Tony Blair used to be called by a lot of people Tony Lyre. <laughs> so, Saddam, unfortunately, he did not have any wise counsels, you know, who could advise him properly. He was dominated, as soon as he was dominated more by Ankara, that brought to his downfall. Initially, it was wisdom, wise ruler, good for the country, but then towards the fact and Ahankara dominated him and you know, he also paid his penalty and died a dog's death literally. Now this one we can actually follow. This is Lord Chaitanya's instruction in try to be a humbler than a blade of grass. Humility. Mindset put into then be taller than a tree. Give respect to others. Don't expect anything in return. I think that we can do. What generally is done is we expect others to respect us, but don't, we don't give respect to others. That can be changed. Give respect to others and don't expect anything in return. This one is actually about what is dharma and what is the religion. Dharma has got four, four legs, which is satyam daya tapasya, which is classic of India. It is sanadana dharma. Religion means actually this opinion. A person's opinion is actually religious. Hitler's opinion was exterminate all the Jews or lower races. Eventually he got exterminated. Whereas Dharma applies to all human beings. First one is integrity satya. Second one is daya which is compassion. Third one is tapas. This might need some explanation. 
tapas is not standing on one leg and doing some austerity. <laughs> it is another meaning is live life need based. Unfortunately, in Kali Yuga, everybody wants to live life greed based. Not everyone, but it is catching up. Our country is also fast catching up. Because television is forcing people through advertisements to buy things which they don't need at. Most of the time, advertisements are forcing people to go into activity, buy things which are really not required. If you really look at need based, our stomach size is only this much, indicating. Brain size is only this much. Heart size is only this much, indicating. But how much food do we stuff in? I am very fond of eating and that shows in my body also, 95 kilograms and you know. Because I tend to eat more, tasty food I tend to eat more. I should be eating only this much. So that is, it's a little, it's not need based eating, I am giving a simple example. Well, everything accumulation, if it is on need based there will be no problem. Last one is Saucha for cleanliness. This is Dharma which applies to all human beings. However, religion is quite narrow minded, it has got a narrow meaning. Someone has given some opinions and everybody should stick to that opinion which has got short span of life. I do not want to expand anything further. I will give Hitler's classic example. He wanted to exterminate all lower races but he got exterminated. Dharma is Sanatana, it is eternal. Nobody can take it away. Dharma to Saksha Bhagavad Pranita. You know, that is godliness. Kaliya effects, Adharma will proliferate. Tulmo an example, there was a minister who was caught for a full cooperation of India scandals long ago. That time it was big news. Now, if somebody is caught as an honest person, that is big news. So there is a degradation that has happened from my childhood days up to now. This is a Kaliya Hypocrisy and quarrel will dominate. Wherever we go, we find generally, I am not talking about now or anything, I am not saying that everybody is like that, hypocrisy dominates. And instead of accepting that I made a mistake, people will defend a mistake and lead to quarrel. Peter fights. Instead if somebody says sorry I made a mistake, it will be diffused very quickly but they won't accept a mistake and it will be goes to all this kind of no efforts are required to start a quarrel please remember this, these things are important efforts are not required to start a quarrel it will happen spontaneously but special skills are required to avoid hypocrisy and quarrel only wise people can avoid quarrel some situations to be peaceful in life maintain zero expectations even at family with family members don't give high expectations. Then you always say, if there is no appointment, there is no disappointment. Same way, if there is no high expectations, there is no problem. So, keep low expectations. You replaced by me, always better. Otherwise, what happens? Warring parties will go into two teams. You, we, you, we, each other say, come on, Charlie, solve this problem. Win-win situation, I am not going into this story. Akbar Mir is a nice one, but we have time constraint. Take everything as God's will, our burdens are taken away. When we pray, actually we do Namaskar. And when we put our head to the floor, actually the Ahankara gets worked. We are accepting the supremacy of another person, supreme control of the universe. And it actually reduces Ahankara. That's why Namaskar should be with the head touching the floor. That's another way out. Anger management is a very nice thing. Anger management. Two slokas that their anger management is contained. Dhyayadu Vishyan Kutsaha Sandaste Shubhajayade Sangha Sanjayade Kama Kama Krodo Vijayade Kroda Pavali Samoha Samoha Svadi Vibrava Svadi Bramsha Buddhi Nashu Buddhinasha Pranashiri. A person's desire forces that person to accomplish that desire and if it doesn't materialize, he becomes angry. And if that anger builds up, 
then slowly the logical thinking power goes off and he can be driven to doing regrettable things. I just put a copy. This is Pandana Mishra's defeat. I am not going to touch that. But this part, about last month, I think this happened in December. Nordido boy used bat, pizza cutter, to kill mother and sister. Did you read this? Very sad. Now he is regretting, 16 year old boy. What's the use? He went and bashed his mother's head with a cricket bat. And killed his sister also because he felt, a 16 year old boy, he felt his mother was more leaning towards his sister. No affection towards me. It is wrong. Mother's part, there was a mistake. She was too uh, uh, strict on this poor boy. Tough, unduly tough. So, this child, children are like uh, wet cement. You put an imprint, it remains. So, be very careful by dealing with children. That's why our olden days we had all this Harikada, chanting, Jabba, Purana. It is not just waste of time. All those things had good effect in their memory, you know. Shivaji became such a good leader because his mother was teaching him. Telling him the stories of the great Purana Krishnas. So he grew up with a very confident, powerful leader, just and equitable. And look at many lot of killers, wayward things, they all had miserable childhoods. How do we control the mind? Practical situation. How do we control? Mind is not easy to control. Arjuna says, I can control the wind, I believe. Mighty wind can be controlled, but controlling mind is difficult. He tells Arjuna to Krishna and pits. In this Kali Yuga, what I have learned, which has helped me a lot, is actually the Kali Santana Upanishad. The smallest Upanishad, Kali Santana Upanishad, it is Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. That is Kali Santana Upanishad. In the Shodasanam Nam Nam, Kali Kalmashanasana. Nātaha padatarovāya sarva vedeshu drishyati. Nārata is being advised this particular Upanishad by Brahmadeva. Puranas are not stories. People who came to India could not comprehend what is happening here. So they consciously subverted, created something called mythology. The opposite of Satya is Mithya and then they coined the word also called mythology. It is not. Many things which is not possible by ordinary human beings does not mean that that is not possible. In our childhood days, we were forced to turn this multiplication tables. 16 into 16, if I am asked, many lot of senior people may be able to say, youngsters, if I ask any youngsters, how much is 16 into 16? They won't be able to. Because that is not learned. So if somebody says, no, no, it's not possible, it's incorrect. So we were given breakfast only after we finished that particular memorizing of that particular multiplication tables. So by these mantras, they are not for jokes. Mana Trayade, that is, control the mind. They are not joke, they are serious business actually. And worldwide now, I have been benefited after going to Dubai. I have asked a lot of questions, but I don't give up on the Jeffa and it has helped my mind, you know, regulate, regulate the mind's unbridled. Uh, travel. So that can be used periodically for all human beings. 26 divine qualities, this requires at least separate 3 hours. So I don't need to touch that. Abhaya means fearlessness. That is what is to be inculcated. By Japa, we get that fearlessness. Ahimsa, not causing himsa to others. Are we happy to go to a police station or any government offices? Why? When we go, tomorrow there is a hearing before so and so. I have been gone for any hearing ever since I went abroad. But are we happy to go to a police station or a government office? No. Why is that so? That is where the British colonial effect in India. They made a system. If you see Gandhi movie, there were 100,000 British officers in 1947 at the time of independence to control 30 crores of Indians, undivided India. Oh, sorry, divided India. In Gandhi movie they say that. 
How is it possible for 100,000 British officers, 1 lakh British officers, white, white, to control such a huge population? A complex nation like India, there is no other world in the country in the world which is as complex as India. So they required middle management. Indian civil service started that way. And how they were inculcated? Current bureaucracy's methodology, which has been practiced almost for 200, 250 odd years. Deny everything to the public. Obey the master. Then your future is taken care of. Unfortunately, even after 1947, that refuses to go away. God alone knows when that will change. This I have seen in almost all the colonies of British. Indians and Egyptians, that's what my boss, who was actually a senior part of the world's Indian told, he was Yemeni. Ram, don't get me wrong. You Indians and Egyptians will lick the feet of the superiors and probably kick the subordinates of the head, that's what he said. I said, sir, I beg to disagree. I am an exception. Well, maybe you are an exception, but this I have seen. You must give me the credit for having been senior partner of World Chinyang for so many years, 30, 40 years, something like that. It's a very gentle man, the master. Then I started observing what he said predominantly was right. Particularly after coming back to India, I noticed it is all the more right. As a, 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 a third rate political politician fellow, you know, olden days they had a diary in their armpit. Now they have these smartphones. They somehow become an MLA or an MLC and they become minister. Can't we access them? No. Police will barricade us out. But they will talk democracy all the time. It's all Kaliga phenomenon. The British colonial effect has not gone away from any of the British, erstwhile British colonies. India is now the only exception. It is changing. So many uh, decadent British laws are being torn away and then being revealed. I am saying thanks to our new Prime Minister. What other people talk about it? You know, I have to admit that. Professional opinion. Noble kings of ancient India, they had cared special protection for six categories, out of which last three may be debatable, may be subject to questions or challenge. First three, king personally had to care. Protection of children, protection of women, protection of the elderly. The next one is cow. Why the cow? Why cow is so important? Is it a god or something? No. Cow is considered amongst the seven mothers. Atma Mata, Guru Patni, Pramani, Raja Patnika, Devu, Tatri, Tathai, Tas Pratvihi. Sattara, Madarasputa, seven mothers, biological mother, Guru's Patni, King's Patni, then the lady who takes birth, then Mother Earth, cow. Why cow is considered to be a mother? Cow is not God. So it's a wrong concept that many people have. Cow is respected. After we stop drinking our mother's milk, whose mother's, whose milk do we drink? It is generally cow. That's why cow is respected. Furthermore, cow has got a lot of special qualities. It's done. Every other animal's dung is actually impure. Cow dung is used for purification. Its urine is used for many medicines. And it doesn't harm anybody. But in Srimad Bhagavad, the 12th Kandam, it is mentioned, a cow will be sent to the slaughterhouse after it stops giving milk in Kaliga. This Srimad Bhagavad, the last Kandam. Now, I should also tell you how I got interested so much in these studies. 20 odd years ago, when I was working in the company as group financial accountant, I had time in the middle of the month. Month, beginning reporting, month and reporting, and my British boss never bothered to, bo used to bother what you are doing as long as deliverables are on time. So I used to read on the internet. In his corner, I put everything in English translation, beautiful ones. One sloka in 12th canto, 12th canto, first chapter, caught my attention. It hit me, you know, like we go for evidence. Sintho Stadam Chandra Bhaga, Kauntin Kashmira Mandalam, Bhokshirti, Shudra Vritya Adhyaya, Mnaichascha Brahma Varchasa. That is a slogan. It says, the kingdoms on the banks of Sindhu, areas of Chandrabhara, Kashmira Mandalam, 
will be eaten by people who are in the shudra vritti no brahmanical culture and they will be mlech happens now it is not specific this mlech happening is not specific to anybody's birth or anything birth religion or anything anybody who does mlech activities is a mlech see 5000 odd years ago it has been predicted pakistan's formation but not by name the kingdoms from the banks of sindhu are all pakistan kashmir mandalam jammu is not mentioned the pertinent point we only just look for very very pertinent points jammu is not mentioned but only kashmir is mentioned this is in 12th kanda first chapter adhyaya and 37th shloka of shrimad bhagavat please you can go and read for it so king is supposed to protect cow brahmanas and vedas why brahmanas it is not necessarily by birth that a person becomes a brahmana janmana jayade shudra upanayana bhave dhuja veda parayana bhave vipra brahmanana bhave brahmana a brahmana sees everybody in equal post sixth chapter krishna says yo maam pashyati sarvatra sarvam cha mai pashyati ಸೊ <laughs> we cannot change all the situations in life however we can change our attitude towards them i might be wrong or i might not have a full picture sometimes we make mistakes by not knowing the full picture end of our apologies for our mistakes and perform corrective action very important step if you are wrong accept the mistake and say sorry and not only that saying just sorry is not enough corrective action is also important appreciate the good work of others particularly the subordinates which is seldom done in our culture many a lot of articles complain they say that this is slavery we should not make them feel that it's slavery if i have had a slavery system kind of thing i never had we should see that it doesn't repeat the buck stops here like president pro man mentioned the buck stops here sugar coated mistake of a colleague family member with the good done with the person appreciate from public criticism private i will just agree at the report aspect agree first by expressing yes i agree with you when somebody is right say i agree with you on that point then talk about the point that we disagree don't start straight away go ignore the correct point and straight away go to the disagreeing point that can cause conflict say thanks for help received this is one good, good practice that the british uh, have you uk us practice empathy then if the situation is beyond control like what our beloved lord jesus said father please forgive these people they know not what they are doing that also helps a lot we can forgive people cuz they are not going to change we can only pray for them it helps a lot sincerely forgiveness is the calling of the strong the weak can never forgive should we be foolishly honest no we have to be selective this is a 17th chapter of the sloka we have to be selective do not say truth which is going to hurt others be an intelligent listener than a trumpet like speaker this one recently received you know it's a good one please read that quickly lee and cut this is i think in one of those movies how do you manage to stay cool all the time lee because i don't get into arguments with stupid people i just cut it short and say you're right cut but that's completely irrational cut is this chap you know that uh, tall negro that's completely irrational wrong oh yes you're right <laughs> the rasa syndrome not appreciable many a lot of people do that the rasa syndrome only my son you know and destroy the kula in the process ridicule in the dark road farmers produce food for all of us but they are ridiculed the most now it's changing thank god is changing agriculture workers are ridiculed 
and everybody moves away from agrarian economy and it's going to cause a real serious food shortage. Feeling happy at the misery of others, most of the people do that. It's not good. We should not feel happy at the misery of others. Not good people will do that, but generally. Trust but verify the facts. When I did article ship here, the distrust was a dominating factor, but after joining here and realized trust is the important factor, but verify the facts. So, I think I can go. Uh, humility does not mean compromise in discipline or tolerate a criminal. Internal discrimination, army commander's duty, police officer's duty, or auditor's duty, our duty, following the important. In simple words, one should not endeavor to prove oneself greater than the other person unless there is a strong justification to do so. Good interpersonal relationship is a key deciding factor in all aspects of life. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. I five minutes extra, I'm sorry. Friends, what a fantastic session you had. So, normally majority of us are busy with our routine uh, GST, income tax, audit accounts, whereas uh, CA Ramakrishnan followed his uh, passion along with his profession and uh, memorized all 700 slokas of Bhagavad Gita. Please give him a big round of applause. So, unfortunately, I could not attend all the session because of some uh, bad commitment. I attended just last 15, 20 minutes. The few things uh, I remember really, I think uh, you all uh, blessed to understand uh, many verses of Bhagavad Gita. And uh, whatever he said, uh, keep low expectation. So whoever wants to be happy, always keep uh, low, low expectation or no expectation at all. Then uh, anger management, all these are uh, really fantastic. Before the new year begins, we had, uh, I think, this fantastic session. Let us uh, thank once again the speaker. As a token of appreciation, may I request uh, Srinivasan sir to come, for, come forward and present a moment to the speaker as a token of appreciation. Please thank the speaker once again. Thank you, Srinivas sir. So, thank you once again. Wish you all a very happy new year. Thank you very much. Good night.